Welcome to our lecture online. In the next trigonometric function we're going to look at is the, called the secant of theta. And here's how we say the word secant. And again, let's go back to the basics. We have a unit circle. We have hypotenuse at length 1 because the unit circle has a radius 1. We have the opposite side to the angle, the adjacent side to the angle, or the x and y value. And again, the point to which the hypotenuse points to on the unit circle has the x and y values that are equal to the height of, from the x-axis to the point and the width from the y-axis to the point right there. Now, if we draw this very same triangle over here and we name the sides, we call this the hypotenuse, we call this the opposite side to the angle, we call this the adjacent side to the angle. And notice that the secant of theta, SEC theta, is equal to the ratio of the hypotenuse divided by the adjacent side. That would be 1 divided by x because the hypotenuse has length 1 and the adjacent side is of course the x value of that point right there so that would be x and since x is equal to the cosine of theta we can then see that the secant of theta is simply the inverse of the cosine of theta. Now since we have the cosine of theta equal to this we can then see that the secant of theta the secant of 0 degrees is equal to 1 over the cosine of 0 degrees, which is equal to 1 divided by the cosine of 0 degrees is 1, which is equal to 1. How about the secant of 30 degrees? The secant of 30 degrees is equal to 1 divided by the cosine of 30 degrees, which is equal to 1 divided by, and the cosine of 30 is the square root of 3 over 2, which means that's equal to 2 divided by the square root of 3. All right, what about the secant of 45 degrees? The secant of 45 degrees is equal to 1 over the cosine of 45 degrees, which is 1 divided by the square root of 2 over 2, which is equal to 2 divided by the square root of 2. So you can see that that number gets to be, uh, let's see, if 2 divided by the square root of 2, well, that's still less than 1, right? So now we have the secant of 60 degrees, which is equal to 1 divided by 1 half, which is equal to, oh, I skipped a step here. Let me write it down. So equal to um, 1 divided by the cosine of 60 degrees, which is equal to 1 divided by 1 half, which is 2. So you can see that as you're dividing by smaller numbers, you get bigger and bigger numbers. Eventually you go from 1 to 2. And finally, when we take the secant of 90 degrees, that's equal to 1 divided by the cosine of 90 degrees, which is 1 divided by 0, which means infinity. Of course, that's undefined. So you can see here that the secant of the angle theta goes from 1 for the angle of 0 degrees to infinity for an angle of 90 degrees. So in this case, the secant is never like 0. Its minimum value is 1, the maximum value is infinity. Does that make sense? Well, notice that... Um, the secant is equal to the hypotenuse divided by the adjacent side, and the hypotenuse is always 1. So unless you're dividing by an infinite number and the adjacent side never becomes infinite, the secant of theta can never go to 0. It's a little bit a different function here, so it goes from 1 to infinity and not any smaller than 1. So that's the definition of the secant of theta.